hello friends welcome to you all for this evening for the hour of vedanta samiti so has been celebrating this since last two years and this january we celebrated the vivekananda youth leadership convention and where we had many eminent talks by eminent dignitaries and continuing in the same process today we are privileged to have swami narasimhanand ji from advaita ashram kolkata which is a branch of the ramakrishna mission and ramakrishna math swami narasimhanand ji is the city editor of prabuddha bharat which is a monthly started by swami vivekananda back in 1897 and he regularly writes articles in on various subjects of religion philosophy social sciences and he is also very interested to talk to and interact to various students and youth and in that context he also regularly visits iit kharagpur where he takes classes on upanishads and other allied subjects so uh, we are indeed privileged to have here in the seating swami narasimhanand ji so i will request him to take up the dais and take a brief talk on the psychology of the deity good evening am i audible to all of you so psychology of the geeta before going into the subject proper i would like to thank uh, vivekananda samiti for having invited me here because it's always a joy to interact with young minds bright minds and also because uh, the city kanpur is the city where i was born and after uh, having spent first four and a half years of my life here i went out and this is the second time i'm coming to the city and also because two of my friends swami sarvottamananda whom you might be knowing as shrish jadav belong to this and another one mahan maharaj brahma vidyananda who recently got the uh, shanti swarup bhatnagar prize for his uh, work in topology which i don't understand anything about it's all latin and greek literally to me so um, they come from this and sarva priyanandi came um, uh, sarva priyanji came some time back here and he told me that it's probably the best academic institution in india today so for all these reasons i am happy to be here in iit kanpur and now i am going to talk about manuals of life what are manuals of life you know generally we have an idea particularly the youngsters we have an idea when we talk about religion about spirituality wo to baad mein dekha jayega it's a post retirement plan something which has to be enjoyed with gratuity and pf benefits which you get after retirement when you purchase a computer or when you purchase a car or a refrigerator or anything it comes with a manual right now this manual tells you what to do when everything is correct for dumb uh, dummies that is those who don't even know how to open the packet or what to do when something goes wrong we have been handed over manuals such manuals by the tradition in the form of the bible in the form of the quran or geeta upanishads so on and so forth and they teach us exactly that they tell us what to do when things go wrong in our life but unfortunately thanks to our wonderful education system what we do is we keep all these manuals somewhere comfortably out of our reach and then bother our heads when some problem occurs in our life and then most of us try to commit suicide some join hemlock society etc so i am here to just bring your attention to this fact that these are manuals which have to be used while you are alive while you are in the heat of the moment because probably for this reason krishna talked about geeta to arjuna in the midst of a battlefield 
it was not in an ashrama. It is when life is happening, when you are here that you need these manuals and these manuals are not so much religious as you think. I mean Swami Vivekananda in fact, he brought out four yogas which was already done by Shankaracharya, but he did it very eloquently and very nicely from these manuals or Gita, Raja Yoga that is the yoga of meditation, Karma Yoga, yoga of action, Jnana Yoga, yoga of knowledge and Bhakti Yoga, yoga of devotion. Out of these two are non-theistic paths, you do not need to believe in a God, you do not need to believe in any system of faith, any belief system, you can simply follow them and they are sheer science and they are Raja Yoga, the yoga of mind or meditation and karma yoga the yoga of action. So, these are scientific methodologies given to us, so that we can use it in our daily lives to cope up with problems and also to find out solutions which can be directly applied. So, that is what we are going to see. Now, there what we will first see is the psychology of the Gita. See Gita begins with psychology, ends with psychology and has got psychology in it completely. Only we have to understand it. How is that? You see what, what is Gita about? The first chapter of Gita, anyone? The battlefield, but the first chapter of Gita is despondency of Arjuna, Arjuna Vishada Yoga it is called. So, Arjuna suddenly before the war started. Arjuna was very much resolute that he will find an end of Karna. Arjuna wanted to see an end to the whole Kaurava dynasty, but when he came in front of the battlefield, then again he was like uh, cat on the wall, he was just seeing what to, hap what to do and what will happen and then he asked his charioteer, now such a glorious charioteer, driver, about this I have a joke I will tell you afterwards. Anyway, glorious charioteer chauffeur and the, the, he asked this chauffeur that you please uh, take this chariot to the middle of both the armies and then he sees and then what happens? What happens is, uh, okay, during this course of uh, talk, this talk, I will be also going back to the verse translation of Bhagavad Gita called the Song Celestial by Edwin Arnold was also written a wonderful poem on the life of Buddha which is called the light of Asia. Mahatma Gandhi read this poem. So, what happens? Arjuna says, Drishtvevam Svajanam Krishna Yuyutsum Samupastitam Siddhanti Mama Gatrani Mukham Chaparishushyati. His mouth went dry and his uh, limbs were shaking. And then he says, Vepatushcha sharire me roma harshascha jayate gandivam samsate hastat tvak chaiva paridahyate. His skin started becoming dry and the gandiva, the uh, something um, closer to AK 47 in the modern times, was going, falling from his hands. This is what happened. Actually, what happened? You know, you go to a job. Before entering the job, you know exactly what you are supposed to do. They tell you so much in the advertisements itself, then in the interview, then there are probably not one interview, a couple of interviews, then you go to the job, then you are there on the first day, then you actually see what you have to done, uh, do, what is done. What happens then? Then you get this fear that I will not be able to do, that is what exactly happened to Arjuna. He said, Nasha shaknomi avasthatum brahmati vacha main manaha, my mind is wavering, I do not know what to do. Nimittani chapashyami viparitani keshava and I do not find any good in this war. Suddenly the Arjuna who was about to kill Karna finds no good in fighting the war. He says, Nacha Shreya Anu Pashyami Hatva Swajana Mahave and he says, these are my own people. See, he was bent upon killing Ar, uh, Karna and Arjuna now says, these are my own kith and kin, why should I kill them? Nakankshe uh, Vijayam Krishna, I do not want any victory, Nacha Rajyam Sukhani Cha, I do not want the, suddenly people come, long back, you know 14 years back, a person came to me and said, Swamiji I want to become a monk, I was a brahmachari at that time, technically not a Swami, but he said, he called me a Swami and said, Swami, 
Then uh, I said, what are you doing? He was working in Cognizant at that time. So he was a perfectly intelligent man and why is an intelligent man becomes a monk? This is a question that nobody understands. So I said, so suddenly some inspiration I got, you know, like many inspirations. I said, who is she? Who is she? Then actually it so happened that there was a she. And, and because of that, he had tried suicide, could not, did not have the courage. So he wanted to become a monk. He thought it's so easy to become a monk. So uh, now he is continuing in cognizant in a very senior position. But the point is, so suddenly he feels that the whole world is, you know, transitory. You know, all songs, Bollywood film songs begin like that. Now it's after when the heroine ditches the hero. Only then it happens. So suddenly you feel that, uh, etc. Same thing Arjuna also says. Then, you see, this is the translation. Why I brought this translation? It's a, such an eloquent versification of uh, Bhagavad Gita. Their common blood yawn concourse of our kin. My members fail. My tongue dries in my mouth. A shudder thrills my body and my hair. Bristles with horror. From my weak hand slips Gandhi with the goodly bow. A fever burns. My skin to parching. Hardly may I stand. The life within me seems to swim and faint. Gandhi with the goodly bow. Oh. The life within me swims to swim and faint. Nothing do I foresee. Say, woe and wail. It is not good, O Keshav. Not of good. Can spring from mutual slaughter. Lo, I hate triumph and domination. Wealth and ease thus sadly won. Finally, could profit what rule recompense, compense? What span of life itself seems sweet, bought with such blood? Suddenly, Arjuna has got this halo behind his head. Suddenly, this realization that war is not good. Why? Because he can't fight. That is the point. Suddenly, he found Kripacharya. He found his own guru. He found Dronacharya, all these people. And suddenly, he understands that he cannot fight. He got what? He got underperformance. This is what happens. This is the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita is all about underperformance. You know what you have to do? You have been told and you, in fact you ask for it. And then suddenly you say, you say I can't do it because you are underperforming. So they will meet you in your appraisal time and they will tell you what exactly will happen. So this is what. So we should understand our mind. You know mind always plays in circles. Bhagavad Gita gives us a very strong basis, a strong foundation to understand the workings of the mind. It says in two shlokas, in one shloka is a couplet, two lines and two shlokas means four lines. In four lines, there is a masterly exposition of the philosophy or the psychology of how the mind works. What is that? I will give you some smattering of Sanskrit because hearing Sanskrit will not do any harm as many people think. Dhyayato vishayan pumsaha, sangas te shupa jayate, sangat sanjayate kamaha, kamat krodo vi jayate, krodat bhavati sammoha, sammohat smriti vibramaha, smriti bhramshat buddhi nasho, buddhi nashat pranashyati. Most of you would have understood the meaning, it's simple because Sanskrit lives in India through all the Indian languages. So it's very easy to understand. Dhyayato vishayan pumsaha. People, generally human beings, pumsa doesn't mean only men, it means men and women. Human beings, they first think of sense objects. Gajar ka halwa. Today in the ashram of Kanpur, they served gajar ka halwa. Really wonderful. I didn't tell them that I probably can't take more because I have some tendency towards sugar. But anyway, these things are better not said at those moments, you know. Better eat. Objects of desire. So, dhyayato vishayan pumsaha. I meditate on gajar ka halwa. The Maharaj brings and I see, wow. Then salivation starts and I want to take. Then suddenly somebody comes, you know. There are, there are always people who are there to say, na. And this person comes and says, so now I want gajar ka halwa. My whole body has become gajar ka halwa. No, I can think only of gajar ka halwa. Some people, they will go gaze on a photo that, tum nahi mile to kya hoga zindagi ka, kind of situation. So, you need, now I want attachment. 
ध्यायतो विषयान पुम्सह संगह तेशु उपजायते immediately attachment is born prof no attachment was there you, a boy meets a girl love at first sight really i mean you don't know each other and then that happens that's what attachment then strong desire sangat sanjayate kama hai strong desire it's not ordinary desire so i now need gajar kalva then some maharaj turns up who knows that i have this condition medical condition and he says that no don't take brother because then you will have to spend ashrama money in going to doctor etc don't take kamat krodha abhijayate what do you mean don't take how often do i get gajar ka halwa what are you talking about i need to take gajar ka halwa now this moment anger then he says no then he knows my uh, head of the center from where i comes you know everybody knows some people in, Today in India, you can get all work done if you know the proper people at the proper places. So he knows. Then he will say, "Naam, I Maharaj ko bata dunga." Bata dunga, मतलब. So then, क्रोध हो भी जाते. क्रोधात भवति सम्मोह है. Delusion. I now for me, Gajar ka alva has become more important than my entire monastic life. See, Gajar ka alva. So, सम्मोहात स्मृति विभ्रम है. and i forget what i am who i am i what is my station in life and then smriti bhramshat buddhi nasho i don't know what to do and i probably give a slap to this brahmachari hmm buddhi nashat everything whatever i have learned whatever has brought to me to this position in life i forget i forget my standing i forget that the brahmachari probably is only 2 years whereas i am into the order for 15 years i am in a position to give lecture to the brahmachari not the other way around etc everything is forgot for a gajar ka halwa lack of wisdom then it goes on and on and on and it creates what buddhi nashat pranashyati destruction all i know is not only gajar ka halwa probably no halwa no food may be kicked out of the ashrama this is what happens in our lives on a daily basis maybe not to that ex- extent not to that intensity but this is what happens we are always on a in a dichotomous situation we always want to to be or not to be is the question always we always think whether to or not phone karunga ki nahi karunga तो उसने मुझे फोन नहीं किया मैं वापस करूंगा कि नहीं करूंगा दिस काइंड ऑफ यू नो दिस आर आर एग्जिस्टेंशियल क्वेश्चंस टुडे एंड ऑफ कोर्स मोबाइल कंपनीज मेक मनी आउट ऑफ दैट दैट्स अ डिफरेंट क्वेश्चन सो पॉन्डर्स ऑन ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ द सेंस दे स्प्रिंग्स अट्रैक्शन फ्रॉम अट्रैक्शन ग्रोस डिजायर डिजायर फ्लेम्स टू फियर्स पैशन पैशन ब्रीड्स रेकलेसनेस देन द मेमोरी ऑल बेटरेड लेट्स नोबल पर्पस गो एंड सैप्स द माइंड टिल पर्पस माइंड एंड मैन आर ऑल अंडन टिल पर्पस मैन एंड माइंड are all undone very eloquently put so if we understand where is the source of the problem where is the source of the problem desire. so does that mean that we will not desire or does that mean we will not enjoy anything you know robert ingersoll who was a great agnostic he once uh met swami vivekananda or rather swami vivekananda met him and he said oh you have become a monk and you cannot enjoy the life so i am here you know i can enjoy orange i can drink its juice etc so swami ji said yes but i want to enjoy the the every bit of that juice every last drop of that juice so what does he mean okay you can have some desire some harmless desires then how do you understand what is harmful and harmless anything which doesn't take you till this position where your purpose mind and man everything is undone that is quite harmless and also no strong attachment no strong attachment if you have okay gajar ka halwa okay i eat if i don't have no problem and also you should remember that probably you have a diabetic condition so you should not eat gajar ka halwa that also so this buddhi this faculty of discernment of understanding that you need to always have some kind of cyber patrol should always be there on your brain and that is what we need to do 
if we can understand that this is the source of all problems Bhagavad Gita very clearly tells and also the, the all the commentators on it starting from Shankaracharya they tell us that if we understand that this is the source of our problems we can if we just nip it in the bud we can you know control it. But Bhagavad Gita does not stop there it gives a solution also it says Raga Dvesha Vimukta Istu Vishayan Indriyas Charan Atma Vashyair Videy Atma Prasadam Adhigachati a person who has but if one deals with the objects of senses not loving and not hating making them serve his free soul which rests serenely lord lo such a man comes to tranquility so we should always understand who is the master here gajar ka halwa is not the master i am the master this thinking this idea should come you might have heard of Swami Ranganathanandaji, who was the 13th president of Ramakrishna order. In a point of time, he was the head of our center in Hyderabad. And there, there was a Brahmachari who has become Swami now and is heading another center. So, he was there, you know, we monks, we have peculiar ideas of austerity and how to uh, get closer to God, etc. Swami Vivekananda in one place says that why should God come uh, just because you are blowing your nose, will God come flying through the air? So, but many people think that if you blow your nose and all the stuff, God will fly and come to you. So, this Maharaj also had some kind of idea. So, in a very hot summer, he was sitting under a fan, ceiling fan, but not switching it on because he felt that that is the kind of austerity he should do. So, there was a corridor and Maharaj was passing through and he saw this and then he again came back and he said that Swami's nam, uh, name is uh, Jairam. He said, Jairam, things are for men, men are not for things. You see, things are meant so that we can use them. So, we should not have a skewed sense of spirituality where we actually keep the things then you should not have ceiling fan at all. So, you have a thing and at the same time you do not use it. That is what it says. One deals with objects of the sense not loving and not hating making them serve his free soul. You make these things serve this. So, some people they have qualms about using Google, about Facebook, about YouTube. I say why do not you use technology? Technology is meant to be used, but do not get used by them. You have a strict discipline. You tell your mind this is what you should do like we will see later on. Oh, I was talking about the driver part having a glorious driver. So, you see no offense to anybody, but this is a joke and it is only a story. So, uh, there was this I think some of you may know this already. There was this Pope who was a driving a person who used to drive love driving but then he became a pope, so he had no chance. So, he went to another place and then he found his uh, car being driven by a person. So, he was out of Vatican City, so he was much more free. Then he said, he went little away from the place where he was put up. Then he said that, uh, okay, you come back and I will drive. So, he started driving and probably it was United States of America. So, he started speeding and then one uh, uh, cop found it and just let him pass through. Then a senior cop, he questioned him, why did you let him pass through? No, he is, he is driving a big person. Oh, who is he? No, he is a big person. He is a congressman? No, 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 bigger than that. Uh, he is, is he a minister or something? No, 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 bigger than that. Is he the president of America? No, no, bigger than that. Who can be bigger than president of United States of America? I said, probably he is driving the God. God, he is probably driving God. Huh, God? Why? How did you know God is going in that car? because Pope was driving it. So, obviously Pope can drive whom? God. So, similarly Arjuna had God himself as his uh, charioteer. So, glorious charioteer, but still this fellow, you know how our mind gets clouded. This is another incident which we are told in the Mahabharata that every day Arjuna used to, uh, the courtesy is that the person, the charioteer will first get down and then ask the person to come down. 
and first get up and ask the person to uh, alight the chariot. But every day it used to be the other way around. First Krishna used to get up and then tell uh, Arjuna to come and like that. And he used to ask Arjuna to get down and then he used to get down. So Arjuna used to feel that I am not being given the proper respect which I deserve. You know, He knew very well that the Lord is his charioteer but still this happens. Suddenly he felt that he has become and after the end of the war he felt that I am now glorious. He forgot about all this chapter where there was serious under performance issue. But still he felt that no I am glorious. Now I have to show this Krishna a lesson how he has been insulting me all through. Then he said okay uh, Krishna uh, okay he said get down. So Krishna smiled you know Krishna has a wonderful smile. And also in that serial that actor also had a wonderful smile. So he said get down. So Krishna said Arjuna you please get down. So this went on for some time and then Arjuna whatever he has he does not have this magical disc Shudarshan Chakra. So he was afraid of Krishna. So he said okay no nothing can be done so he got down. And then Arjuna went down and Krishna went down and in moments the whole chariot became powder. It simply burst and became powder. So Arjuna thought wow what was that? Then Krishna told him that see all these weapons or this missiles or this uh, Ashtra and all that they had this effect and I was you know stopping their effect till all these days and today the war is over so I have come down and that is why I always used to ask you to come after me. And I know that you had this ego problem and you thought that I was not respecting you. So this is what our mind knows some facts everything is properly done but suddenly the process somewhere we feel that we are some great person just because we have come to some position in life etc. That is what the Bhagavad Gita says and this example of a lotus leaf which is very often quoted in the scriptures. You see you take a lotus leaf all of you have seen and put some water they are like this. They do not they don't get absorbed in the leaf. They do not touch and you just do the leaf like this overturn it and the water simply rolls down. So that is what we should aspire to be. It is not easy. Eh? Indriyanam hi charatam yanmanon vidyate tadasya harati pragyam vayur navam eva ambhasi. Now the question is I do not care what will happen if I do not follow. You have no other job coming from Kolkata and giving us a lecture. And somehow we have also suffered the lecture but that does not mean that we have to follow it in toto. Fine, no problem. You may not follow that then what will you do? Yan mano anuvidhiyate. Indriyanam hi charatam. You follow the dictates of your senses. You do exactly what your senses tell you. Wherever your senses take you, wherever your senses ask you to go, whatever they tell you to do. What will happen? Tadasya, the person who does that, Harati Pragyam, he or she loses intellect, Pragya, wisdom. And what is the condition? Condition is like Titanic. That is the condition, titanic, huge shipwreck. So titanic people also they thought that this is the ultimate ship, like this is the ship which will never sink, but it sank all the same. So a person who will do that, a person who will simply follow the senses without having any kind of cyber patrol mechanism, the person will face this consequence. So what should one person do? Again, tasmad, that is why yasya mahabaho nigrihitani sarvashaha indriyan indriyarthebya tasya pragya pratishtita. Only with him, great prince whose senses are not swayed by things of sense, only with him who holds his mastery, shows wisdom perfect. What is midnight? That is the thing. So, according to him, according to Sri Krishna, if a person shows his mastery over the senses like uh, in the horse in the Olympics which was uh, held in London, London there were many events but certain events get more preference over the other. How many of you did actually see this equestrian events? Okay. I guess so. 
you know next time if you ever come across you please see this equestrian e q u e s t e r i a n something english pronunciation is always a catastrophe so equestrian events are what events where horses are uh, ridden by people and there is there are a lot of events like just like gymnastics where there is music and there is synchrony etc and you should watch it perfect synchrony between the rider and the horse that is what we need to have when we are talking about our synchronization with the mind and the senses and mind with viveka or brain brain not in the sense of the western idea of brain but uh, wisdom where whatever you have been taught swami vigyanananda who was a monastic disciple of sri ramakrishna was repeatedly asked by many people what should we do what should we do then he used to say that whatever you should do has been taught to you in your primary classes in the primer speak the truth live a righteous life that's all you have to do but whether you will follow it or not that is the real task ahead of you that's the real challenge so what you should do is very clear in front of you all of us know but how to follow that and what are the challenges and challenges in following that and how do you cope with them that is the real crisis so here also a person has to have mastery over the senses just like those riders who actually ask their horses to lift the to little or to uh, uh, walk trot diagonally to dance with the music etc similarly we should have that kind of will you not enjoy music enjoy will you not watch movies watch but you should know when to stop you should have a kind of police mechanism in your mind vihaya kamanya sarvan pumams charati nispruha nirmamo nirankara sa shanti madhi gachati and a person who shaking of the yoke of flesh lives lord not servant of his lust set free from pride from passion from the sin of self tachat tranquility sin of course is not there in the original verse this is an introduction by arnold anyway so swami vivekananda says there is no sin there is only progress from lower truth to higher truth you don't sin actually you only commit a mistake i always tell that to people who come to me and say that oh i have seen that i say that and some of they can't you know believe it it's so it doesn't ring true in their ears they say really i have done such a big mistake and you say that swami ji says that it's only a mistake i said yes it's only a mistake no but it's a huge mistake i will have to suffer in the burning hell uh, etc so i said they have gone to you know mercury you know mars and still they have not found out hell so where is hell we don't know so hell and heaven are here that is why the bhagavad gita is a manual where they talk about the very present situation and that's why they say ihaiva tairjita sarga hai this is here that you will have to detach yourself you will have to give up attachment you will have to come away from sorrow or suffering not somewhere else so whenever this kind of thing happens you will get such kind of light and there will be a halo behind your head and you will be enlightened then you don't need to watch any uh, talks or listen to any such talks you can also write another book on gita in fact there is a book called yet another book on gita there are so many books on gita so will that happen i don't know what light will come or whatever because all these people who try to explain the illumination sa shantim adigachati he attains to tranquility all these people say that there was a ocean of light including sri ramakrishna because they are not able to communicate actually what happened so about light i can tell you one thing you now once when i was in chennai math that is chennai sri ramakrishna math there was a lady who used to come to the ashrama and she used to uh, after coming regularly for some months she said that yeah i use i get enlightenment every day every day i am kind of enlightened i get some kind of jyoti darshan some vision i get so the swami who was in charge of the temple he said oh really what happens she said yes i see this light at the end of the towards the end of my meditation so he asked when do you meditate 
So she said, 7 o'clock I start and when do you finish? At about 8 o'clock, oh, okay. So he said, don't worry, that is the time when I switch on the light in front of you. So, so please be careful, these things can be very misleading. You know, some one fellow came to me and told, I got realization. What happened? Suddenly my Kundalini start waking up. No, it went up. Everybody, we always expect something will happen. Some Kundalini will come up and something will happen. Suddenly something, abracadabra. But, so he said uh, that Kundalini is, I said, what happened? So I was ironing my clothes. I said, you got a shock. <laughs> That's what has happened. You got a shock. And please consult a psychiatrist because this is something I can't do. He said, how did you know Swamiji? Because I actually consulted a psychiatrist and he says that I, has got, I have got probably the beginning stages of schizophrenia. I said, fine. Thank you. So, you know, this is what happens. So, spirituality is changing the way you live, changing the way you think. It is not some, some kind of mystery mongering or something. I would request all of you to read one book if you have not already, called Phantoms in the Brain by one V. S. Ramachandran, who happens to be one of the leading uh, neuroscientists. What is this book so, uh, why is it so fascinating to me? It is fascinating to me because this book is written by a person who uh, since his childhood was outside of India and approaches mind from a neuroscientist perspective and he in fact continued experiments done by Wilder Penfield that is brain mapping and he inserted electrodes in the interpretative cortex and found out, in fact this is what uh, was found out by Wilder Penfield that they can double your consciousness. So when I am talking to you I think parallelly, so there are two streams of consciousness, is it not? So, by doubling a person can at the same time have two streams that is they can think two things and talk attend to two people physically. It sounds very what you call almost impossible, but actually it has happened people have done experiments. While the Phil, Phil, Phil did, uh, did his first experiment somewhere in 1920s and published his results in 1925. So, he also did that. And then finally, by all these experiments, he says that if all these experiments do not prove that the idea of notion of a body, notion of a locus of a body is an illusion, then nothing will. That is a great statement. He says that the idea that Shubhadeep's body is here is an illusion. The idea that I am standing here, my locus of the body is an illusion from the neuroscientist point of view. So, anyway I do not know how he came to that conclusion, probably for that you need to uh, go through his scientific papers. But what I am coming to is, there he tells me one thing which Patanjali says in his Patanjali Yoga aphorisms and that is that if you need some kind of titillating spiritual experience in the form of some vision or some sound etc then you can as well eat or have LSD, no, that is easier, you do not need to have meditation. Aushadhi is the word used by Patanjali, he says these kind of experiences can be brought by medicine and the same thing is what is talked of by this Ramachandran, he says that one of uh, volunteers, he asked a volunteer to simply come on his table and he put this electrode in his brain and he got some ecstasy. What is the ecstasy? The person was of course an American and for all Americans the highest acme is with no offence is physical pleasure only. So, uh, he said that it was like having orgasm from every pore of my body, fine. Then so Ramachandran thought oh, so it is like an Upanishadic statement, it is so much of ecstasy. Then he found that no it is not so, why because this man as soon as he got out from the table. Uh, you know his uh, experiment table, he started for flirting with his nurses. So, there was no behavioral change, there was no character transformation. This was just uh, experience, that is all. So, if you just see light, that does not mean that you have become master of your senses. Master of your senses, you have to become and that road is a very 
difficult road but if you take up that road then you know that one fine morning you can say no when it really matters you can actually prevent your senses by uh, from destroying you vitaraga bhayakroda this is a uh, verse which was very very much liked by swami ranganathananda ji vitaraga bhayakroda manmaya maam upashrita bahavo jnana tapasa puta mad bhavam agata so a person who from fear set free from anger from desire keeping their hearts fixed upon me my faithful purified by sacred flame of knowledge such as these mix with my being so shri krishna says that these people come to me come to me that is lord here there is a word jnana tapasa the austerity of knowledge the tapas tapasya of knowledge there was a philosopher by name lyotard how many of you are aware franco lyotard he was one of the thinkers who brought about the movement called postmodernism now he wrote a book um, and there he says that knowledge will be commoditized he wrote that somewhere in 50s and then he says uh, 50s 60s he says that knowledge will eventually be commoditized that you will have a price tag on knowledge and that's what it will take you to become knowledgeable i mean you don't so the book is titled the postmodern condition a report on knowledge and he says that similarly einstein says something like i don't need to know where uh, i don't know, need to know everything i only need to know where to get something when i need it so it gives you an idea of how knowledge will become selective which it has already become all you need to know is google i namaha <laughs> once you know this mantra you know everything you just do google i namaha and bingo you have it bingo is also another search engine bing not o so uh, this thing is what swami ranganathananda points out that it removes the intellectual austerity part it only gives you information not knowledge it only gives you data not wisdom no there is a process by which you acquire knowledge and become master of that knowledge that process is eliminated you only have some kind of quantitative input but there is no qualitative enhancement or qualitative understanding or comprehension that we need to have and that is why swami vivekananda says that when a spiritual teacher teaches it's not just some words going from one person to the other but there is a force which goes from one person to another for example in a very very worldly context worldly quote and quote in a very very mundane context when a person says i love you it doesn't mean just those three words i think you will believe is it not there is some kind of a feeling which goes from one person to another and it's not just dry three words which which there is some kind of chemistry i don't know why they call this chemistry not biology or physics but anyway there is some kind of chemistry there and that chemistry is what makes the other person understand that yes what the person is telling is actually in truth so this intellectual austerity is what we need to have how can we have intellectual austerity when we are talking about mind we saw dhyate vishayan pumsah objects of desire and consequent attachment to those objects is the root of all evil so intellectual austerity is like having someone in your brain saying no i will not have this bahavo jnana tapasa puta puta means becoming sacred or becoming uh, pure pavitra from that word pavana from that word it comes puta so becoming pure purified bahavo jnana tapasa out of lot of intellectual austerity it doesn't happen in one day so you constantly deny yourself or you constantly uh, understand in sanskrit that's a beautiful word called aparigraha means having only that much 
which is necessary, which is optimum, which is optimum utilization of resources. Some people have a fleet of 40 cars in their houses, you can ride only one at a time. So, some people have so many watches, so many mobiles and this dual sim concept I never could understand, because at one point of time you can only attend one call. So, what is the fun in having two sims, duo sim and all that. So, this aparigraha if you have, then your mind says that no, I will not have more than what I need, I will not go for more than what I need. Okay, this is an allurement, this is a temptation, but I will not give in to this temptation and it actually in practice takes only few moments. If you give in, those are also only few moments and if you withstand yourself means you do not give in, you hold yourself, those are also few moments. After that you really think, oh what is that? You know, Tyagarupananda came, Tyagarupanji, yes, Tyagarupananda ji told me one incident that he is now uh, in Vidya Mandir. Um, so, there in the hostel, there was a boy who wanted to leave the hostel and go. People, they feel that hostel is so, you know, so they suddenly feel so phobic. So, he wanted to go and he wanted to go to his house and something. So, Maharaj told, okay, have you had your food? No. So, he said, okay, have food properly, take a nice nap and then we will think about it. So, he went had food and Maharaj had a secret instruction that feed him nicely, stuff him properly. So, all this pious kheer everything was stuffed and he became full and then suddenly got sleep and he slept and then he came out and was having tea then Maharaj said you were telling about going, what going? <laughs> going where? So, in only few moments, only at that heat of the moment you feel that no I want to do, I abhi chahiye, I want it now, but once you just turn the mind somewhere else and mind forgets, it is how you channelize the mind. So, this intellectual austerity means having some kind of monitoring content filter here in your brain. So, once you have the content filter in the uh, right place, then you have no problem. Police, that is what we are talking about. If you are wondering where this fancy car is, it is in Tamil Nadu, police having such fancy car. This is Haldia refinery. So, what Swami Ranganathanji says is we need to have a mental refinery. We purify our thoughts to such an extent that after some time no impure thoughts come out of your brain. Whatever you think are good. Now, you would have heard probably that if somebody practices penance or purity of thought, word and deed for 12 years whatever that person tells becomes true. How does that happen? Because if you keep on practicing this, whatever you think or tell will be true to begin with, because you, you have put a mechanism in place, where you only think what is pure and what is pure? That which is true and that which is unselfish is pure. Now, this has to be done by you, feel it, say it. So, this has to be felt by you and said by you and done by you, it cannot be probably you can hear it in a talk or in the YouTube or you can read about it, but it has to be practiced by you, Uddharet Atmanat Manam, Na Atmanam Avasadayet, Atmaiva Hi Atmano Bandhu, Atmaiva Ripu Atmanaha you are your own friend and you are your enemy and it is you just like you do this pull ups, I do not know how many of you do, but people who do, you pull yourself up using your own strength and then you leave, let yourself go loose and again you do that. So, you are the person who can bring yourself up and you are the person who can let you down. So, you have to be careful, there is no other person, never say that oh I am you know, because of you everything happened, tum magar mere jindagi mein nahi hote ta, aisa kuch nahi hota, blah blah blah. How many Hindi film dialogues are written, written like that? So, no, please do not blame anything, when you become angry, it is because you want to become angry, when you suffer actually, you want to suffer, that is why you suffer. You may call me straight from the loony bin, but this is what it is, actually it is the philosophy and it is also the psychology. You suffer because you want to suffer. You cry because you want to cry, that is why some people have 
pipelines in their eyes. So this is what Bhagavad Gita is telling, first it is telling us the problem, before that it is telling that you do not want even to address the problem under performance, then it is telling us this is the problem and this is the solution, but who has to do it? You have to do it and uh, how do you do it again? First you have to have a strong resolution not like the ones which you have usually during new year, not those. Sankalpa prabhavan kamans tyatva sarvan asheshataha manasaiv indriya gramam viniyamya samantataha. Then once you have a strong resolution then how do you go about it? You sit for a meditation and in one hour flat you achieve illumination, it does not happen like that. Shanai shanai uparamed, slowly, it always happens slowly. Now somebody was asked, again a joke, somebody was asked that uh, um, be very active and do not sleep and be very brisk, then they said why? Then you will live long and you will be happy, he said no, I follow the tortoise model. Now tortoise lives probably the longest or something. So it you know the speed of tortoise. So I want to live long, so and going on a tangent, Swami Vivekananda's message arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached, I think has been wrongly understood by Indians. Why? Because the recent study tells that Indians are the most sleep deprived in the world. So Swamiji said arise awake. So you are not going to sleep, <laughs> no, no I do not think that is what he meant. So please have a good night sleep, 8 hours sleep is what one should have and this is unfortunate many youngsters have died in the recent past at least some whom I know personally, I knew personally because of uh, serious cardiac condition, heart condition because they did not sleep well. So people think 4 hours sleep. 5 hours sleep is a uh, big thing, no you need to sleep properly and that is one big stress buster, you will not be stressed if you sleep properly. So anyway, shanai shanai uparamed buddhya dhriti grihitaya, you have to have the resolution then slowly and steadily, buddhya dhriti grihitaya, steadily, steadfastness, atma samstham manakritva na kinchid apichintayet, you have this strong resolution slowly progress steadfastly and do not think, do not waver but of course your mind will waver. The moment you ask your mind not to do something that is exactly what it will do. So do not do this means it will do, so never when you become parents never tell your children do not do this because then they will do that. So then if you do or when your mind does what to do, yato yato nishcharati, nishchalati, manas chanchalam astiram. More the mind wavers from the object, your goal, goal fixing is something which we do not generally do, we construct buildings but we do not have goal in our lives. So goal setting you have, then you slowly and steadily pro progress towards the achievement of that goal and when the mind deflects from that goal, you bring back the mind and fix it on the goal. So there is this demon according to Swami Vivekananda in one of his stories in Karma Yoga. So that demon was, whatever work is given to the demon that person will do, jinn, Allahuddin ka jinn kind of. So this one work he could not do, one job that is straightening the tail of dog. So he will do like this and again, again. So similarly, mind is more like a monkey, you know. So you need to bring the mind back again and fix it on the goal. And if you do that, Atmani eva Vasham nayet. If you do that, then probably in some time, you see, steadfastly the will must toil there to till efforts end in ease and thought has passed from thinking, shaking off all longings bred by dreams of fame and gain, shutting the doorways of senses close with watchful ward. So, step by step it comes to gift of peace assured and heart assuaged. When the mind dwells self wrapped and the soul broods cumberless, but as often as the heart breaks wild and wavering from control so oft let him recurb it, let him rein it back. So when you feel that you have to 
make a call so desperately switch off the mobile phone do it practice it when you feel that your entire existence is dependent on that sim card switch it off have some 15 minutes rest and then you will see that doesn't matter actually nothing changes in fact as shubhadeep was telling in the good old days when there was no mobile phone people were still working right in fact business was being done etc and we indians are very passionate about mobile phone because we are passionate about talking 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 <laughs> hardly accomplishing anything we just talk and so all the mobile phone companies of the world come here invest and they know sure profit because we love to talk not communicate chanchalam hi mana krishna now arjuna says that my mind is so restless it's not rest in peace but rest in pieces chanchalam hi mana krishna pramathi balavadridam tasyaham nigraham manye vayo rivasu dushkaram and it is difficult to control this mind as difficult as to control wind how can you control vayu wind is it possible even to control no it's not so he says chanchalam so what do i do you are giving me all this funda about but i know swami ji that i should bring back the mind and all this blah blah but it's not possible you see when i don't want to think of dominos pizza that is what i think about so how to control so he says asamshayam mahabaho mano durnigraham chalam abhyasena tu kaunteya vairagyena cha grihyate three key words abhyasa vairagya and two key words abhyasa and vairagya so he says yes there is no doubt that it is chanchalam and it is difficult to control mind it's difficult to control it's not just having some lines of programming and you have a content filter it's not that simple it's very difficult so abhyasena to kaunteya talking about mobile phones one swami who is a great orator orator he was giving a lecture in advaita ashrama very recently some days back and you know some mobile phones were buzzing and our devotees have this bad and through this passion you can control it so there was one swami called swami gambhiranand ji he has translated many of the scriptures from sanskrit to english particularly the upanishads and the gita and he was also the president of ramkrishna mat and mission so he was once walking and uh, he found so this is what he says that restrained by habit man's heart is to restrain and wavering wavering yet made grow restrained by habit so restrained by habit that is the thing so he saw this scene a young man uh, throwing you no know, newspaper newspaper in cycle he saw he was walking with his assistant sevak and he saw this and that he was throwing it to some uh, second floor or something and it he was riding in the bicycle and he did not stop he just threw it like that and it fell right in place in the balcony we see it it's very common sight so maharaj said oh such a wonderful practice then he called that uh, person he said how did you do that then he riding the cycle he went across uh, by him he passed by him and he said abhyasena tu kaunte hai he actually told the sanskrit words so you see spirituality lives in india if some so called intellectual tells you that it doesn't he or she is a fool that's what because why i have many reasons and religion swami vivekananda says that if you can from gangotri ganga starts and it goes to ganga sagar mixes with the ocean so swami ji says if you can even change the course of ganges if you can probably change it to some other place even if that were possible it is not possible to change the fact that religion is the pivot religion is the backbone of india all politicians know that but they tell don't tell you that that's what they use it to their advantage they know that why because in india if in some nook and corner of india a ganesha idol 
drinks milk next 2 hours all ganesha idols across the world drink milk they do if in india you find a drunkard trunk truck driver no who goes to those roadside dabas has so many other things i don't want to say because they may not be parliamentary <laughs> so it has so much fun in one sense and comes back next day on the steering wheel what does he do like this or he will also show some agarbatti and the stench of liquor has not died worse still some people who drink before drinking they do this <laughs> i in fact asked my friend what is this you are doing I, i i don't drink okay i just saw it and i asked what is this you he said offering <laughs> wow religion lives in india so abhyasena to kaun the even that newspaper boy knows that by abhyasa by practice one can achieve things which seem difficult then there are certain moral belief systems or value systems not belief systems value systems which is better if we follow them it's like anti virus you know you have this in place and your system is safe the first thing you should do when you get a new system is put the anti virus then baad ki baad mein dekhi jayegi first you put this and then get all the updates and then you do whatever you want देवध्वज गुरु प्राज्ञ पूजन शौचम आर्जव ब्रह्मचर्य अहिंसा च शारीर तप उच्य सो बॉडी वर्ड एंड माइंड एट दीज थ्री लेवल्स यू नीड टू हैव सम काइंड ऑफ एंटी वायरस कंट्रोल व्हाट इज दिस देवध्वज गुरु प्राज्ञ पूजन शौचम आर्जव यू नीड टू worship or respect gods people who are knowledgeable your teachers and shaucham be cleanly arjavam straight forward brahmacharyam be pure in thought word and deed ahimsa not kill people every one keyword will lead to a series of lectures so i am not going in detail into them but this is what bhagavad gita tells us this is also psychology the moment you have this clear in your mind automatically allied problems are avoided shariram tapo uchyate brahmacharyam ahimsa then anudvega karam vakyam you don't speak in such a way which will create trouble satyam priya hitam chayat and you speak truth there is a quotation which is wrongly quoted always satyam vada priyam vada ma vada satyam apriyam so the second part says first part is you have to speak truth and you have to speak which is pleasant to hear never speak truth which is unpleasant but the second part says that never speak something which is pleasant if it is untrue so please do not polish your words then what is the difference suppose you see a lame person you don't call a lame person a lame person because it's quite evident you don't call a fat person you call the person healthy don't call fat no? healthy so you don't call something which is very evident but at the same time if a person is doing something wrong you need to tell it on the face vang mayam swadhyaya abhyasanam chaiva so swadhyaya you do you uh, have your learning curve proper and then you abhyasa you practice it that is vangmaya tapa that is the austerity at the word level speech level mana prasada saumyatvam maunam atma vinigraha and mana prasada you are cheerful always that is according to swami vivekananda first sign of your becoming religious then maunam atma vinigraha you keep quiet not that you speak only when you are required to otherwise you are not becoming garrulous or chatterbox etc 
भाव संशुद्धि इति एतत् तपो मानसम उच्यते एंड यू हैव अ प्योरिटी ऑफ इंटेंशन भाव संशुद्धि वी डू मिस्टेक्स बट द बिगेस्ट मिस्टेक वुड बी टू हैव अ रॉन्ग इंटेंशन यू नो डिसिप्लिन इवन हिटलर हैड डिसिप्लिन हिटलर हैड बट ही डिंट हैव गुड इंटेंशन सो जस्ट हैविंग डिसिप्लिन दैट्स वाई इन आर मिथॉलॉजी वी हैव वंडरफुल लेसन्स रावणा ऑल्सो डिड तपस्या Kumbhakarana also did tapasya, but their intention, intentions were different. So worship of gods, meriting worship, lowly reverence, twice borns. Actually, twice born is a word which is used for Brahmins, but that has lost its context. Twice born, why? Because first they are born out of the womb, then they are born when the sacred thread is given. Rectitude and the Brahmacharya vow. and not to injure any helpless thing this make a true religiousness of act word ca- causing no man woe words ever true gentle and pleasing words and those e say in murmured reading of a sacred writ these make the true religiousness of speech serenity of soul benignity sway of the silent spirit constant stress to sanctify the nature these things make good right and true religiousness of mind यदा संहरते चाय कूर्मोंगानी वर्वश इंद्रियान इंद्रियाथेभ्य तस् प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठित सो वी सॉ दट हाउ द मैंड हेज बीन अनलाइज इन दि भगवदगीता आई हेव टेकन ओनली सेलेक्टिव वर्सेस भगवदगीता इज रिप्लीट विथ सच वर्सेस एंड देन हाउ भगवदगीता इन टू वर्सेस सेज द चेन ऑफ इवेंट्स विच लीड्स टू आर डिस्ट्रक्शन so what does it want us to be in this shloka it gives a very very graphical imagery it says a person who to none and no way overborn by ties of flesh takes evil things and good neither desponding nor exulting such bears wisdom's plainest mark so you just take things as they come and you do not have a you know you don't sit on value judgment also and at the same time you know what to take so as the wise tortoise draws its four feet safe under its shield his five frail senses back under the spirit's buckler from the world fire wall that's what windows fire wall so bhagavad gita says that you should have fire wall not that you just don't allow any data packet to enter into your system that can't be but you have a firewall which will actually see what is entering and like the tortoise so this is the tortoise but when it finds itself you no know, in danger in peril what does it do it does this it kurma angani iva kurma means tortoise in sanskrit angani if just like the limbs of a tortoise it draws all the limbs so sometimes when you are trying to you know a girlfriend boyfriend kind of scenario when you are trying to impress and the person does does not listen to what you are telling best thing is keep the mobile let the person talk keep the mobile aside and believe me after 5 minutes you take the person is still talking it happens so you just keep it and then so just withdraw yourself and that gives you lot of serenity that gives you mental peace this to me is the crux of the whole psychology of human mind and starting from those two shlokas and ending with this shloka bhagavad gita has given us a complete manual on how to deal with the mind now how to actually do it depends on us do you have any questions speechless no questions how do you decide what is good or what is bad you are training your mind to do the good things and avoid the bad um uh, so how can you uh, your parents say something different uh, you actually feel something different some people say something different or you actually judge good so uh, that's why these manuals they uh, come to help they give you a definite set of ideas that these are bad and these are good having said that having said that 
whenever you do something good you get a feel of uh, ennobling something no sense of ennoblement and also you get a tremendous feel of feeling of strength something which gives you strength that is good according to swami vivekananda and anything which weakens you you should reject it as poison so these manuals they will tell you that speak truth now you know that speaking truth now you should not speak lie that you know now if you generally parents nowadays they may change they may say jhoot bolo na kya hai rishwat le lo na kya hai sab log le rahe hain aap bhi le lo so yes sab log bahut kuch kar rahe hain hum bhi kar lete hain so then you turn up to the parents and say that aap jao wahan pe humne 5 lakh rupees deposit kar diya hai वो आपकी देखभाल कर लेंगे महीने हर महीने हम दस हजार भेज देंगे समृद्धाश्रम बोला ऐसे क्यों कहा तो आप कह रहे थे ना सब लोग कर रहे हैं तो ये भी सब लोग कर रहे हैं रिगेटिंग द पॉइंट सो पेरेंट्स मे नॉट बी टेलिंग यू व्हाट इज ट्रू टीचर्स मे नॉट टेल यू दैट स्टूडेंट्स और योर फ्रेंड्स मे नॉट टेल यू दैट बट देन यू नो फ्रॉम दीज मैन्यूल्स दिस इज वॉट आई शुड डू एंड देन यू शुड डू दैम एंड देन फाइंड वेदर इट गिवस यू स्ट्रेंथ No help means what kind of help? Maybe some monetary help. Maybe uh, this thing I need to go somewhere and I do something. So some other person also could do. According to my consideration, that is not enough. Okay. You see, uh, Sarada Devi, who was the wife, I don't know, or consort or whatever of Sri Ramakrishna, because they were not husband and wife in that sense of the term. she said that whenever somebody is begging in front of you that person is in need she said this in the context of service in ramakrishna mission in a hospital center many people who could uh, spend money who could go to doctors and pay money they were coming to the ashrama and having uh, enjoying the free service of the ashrama so the monks were upset they said why are they doing this so she told sarada devi told that if somebody comes to you and spreads their hand and say i want then the person is in need so according to your context somebody is coming to your help then the person is in need now it depends on whether you will help or not please don't sit on a value judgment whether the person needs that or not that we don't need to do according to that person the person needs now whether you will help or not you can say i don't i will not help that's all our problem is we want to have a proper relationship at the same time not want to help then in the uh, via media we end up telling lies ah yes 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 bahut kaam tha you may be sitting in a ac cabin and bahut kaam tha main bhi aa rahi hu wagera don't do that just ar javam straight forward tell that i don't think i can help you in this fine you may lose a friend okay facebook is there <laughs> no don't be rude very politely say <laughs> call center <laughs> if something goes wrong with your mobile mujhe aasha hai ki humne aapki shikayat ka pura ye kiya are kahan kiya hai kuch nahi kiya fir bhi aaj se any questions yes ha huh? strong desire is yes bad thing strong purpose and strong desire these are two different things strong resolution sankalpa is the word in sanskrit strong resolution and strong desire desire means it will bring attachment sankalpa is i will give you a very empirical uh, uh, example surgery all of us know there are surgeons no surgeon or generally surgeons don't perform a surgery which is related to their relatives friends or relatives they don't perform because surgery requires lot of precision very high level of precision so the hands you know what happened to arjuna happens there hands start shaking trembling so they ask some other surgeon to perform the surgery no the why i am coming there because the strong desire that the person should get well is there so it leads to attachment but when the surgeon is doing some other surgery there is no desire the surgery 
he will perform and patient will be operation successful patient died no problem no problem but here the person wants that my daughter should survive so there will be confusion are you getting the point both places there is a difference this is strong desire and there is strong resolution even there the surgeon comes to the operation theater and wants that the operation should be successful there is a strong resolution but that's not strong desire dejection somebody has dejected <laughs> no okay you need me not answer that question anyway I mean cause of dejection by somebody rejection you f you find dejection so you have to use the chain no you have to uh, find out like in uh, sometimes in systems you do you have to find out when this onset of that dejection when this dejection started was that after getting some particular mobile phone call or something so you have to find out seriously you have to find out you have to trace the cause that's what you can do it and another technique is you just see what maximum is going to go around at at the maximum level what will go what is the worst possible outcome and be prepared for that mentally because most of the times nothing will happen we are just making uh, our head real no existence of ourselves means your idea of yourself you have to understand what are you that is again a different topic what are you whether you are this body you are this mind you are some qualification or what when you associate yourself with these things which are very you know uh, temporary then you feel this the time losing that's what happened so somebody's facebook account gets gmail account gets uh, hacked the person may as well commit suicide so we have actually our whole thing in olden days good old days fairy tales was to be there no so like this lord voldemort his uh, he has converted him his life into so many parts and it is stored in so many one is the snake etc etc so this is not new to us pariyon ki kahani hame ye tha so some tota will be there saath samundar par and you go and find the heart of that tota and kill that tota this asur will die so now our tota you have to find out where your tota is gmail facebook or whatever is it your real existence ha huh, this is exactly the question which arjuna asked uh he says that i don't want to do but somehow somebody by force is making me do so then krishna says that this is your desire this is your prarabdha the impressions of the actions which you have done in the past see we have performed in the hindu tradition or the indian tradition we believe in reincarnation or rebirth so i have done so many actions in this life and many in the last life or the previous lives so those have left some samskara on my mind so those samskaras will ask me to do this baladiva niyojati that is a word used in gita hmm. so you have to at that time keep quiet this word anudvega hmm. like udvega anudvega when in doubt consult the manual okay so what is the translation anudvega karam vakyam words causing no man woe that's what i said no it doesn't cause any uh, trouble in other person udvega karam means vega karam causing restlessness anudvega karam means not causing restlessness so if i uh, call somebody a stupid maybe they will not bother something like like that if i tell somebody that uh oh you have been fired or something so it will cause restlessness but if you are the hr manager of a big company you probably have to tell that so how do you this is all uh the topic of the film what is that up in the air so this is a big question that is really this film up in the air was very interesting because there in one scene this george clooney comes and tells that i was thinking that 
how little you need actually he takes a big uh, backpack of the person who has just joined the woman and starts rejecting all the things then he uh, tells her that you don't actually need so many things so when i was uh, packing to come here actually i remembered that scene i said no oh, really we don't need many things this is all we need yes remove the cause no everything is in your control in every sense everything is in your control from the advaitic point of view also everything is in your control in fact advaitic uh, standpoint is this world is not there it is because of you you are projecting this world okay i will not go to that extent now but point is it is in your control it is in your control the association which we develop that is very much in our control if i don't take pizza or gajar ka halwa nothing is going to no hell is not going to break loose where are the answers are they actually inside me or they are in some matter or they are inside you you have the answer yourself the very point that you were actually asking me are they inside me you know the answer they are inside you i mean so somehow i don't believe you don't believe i will give you an example you see a naked woman <laughs> sorry my examples are all very you know radical but it needs to be like that so that it drives the point home quickly a naked woman to a child of 2 years does she make any difference okay the naked woman if it's going to be somebody's mother any difference but if it's just a naked woman so much of excitement or so much of turbulence in somebody's mind so where is this coming from is it coming from the object or from the subject hmm. no I, i told you this is not attachment it is resolution you should have a strong resolution to achieve that goal not attachment suppose you do not achieve that's again a point we are not trained for failure we are always trained for success suppose you do not achieve what you don't have plan b plan c plan d up to z you can have plans yes just like failure is success yes no failure also brings uh, dejection or uh, kind of sorrow and success brings pleasure but bhagavad gita tells us that instead of this you have something you do something because you have a purpose you have a vision that's why how tra- i translated you have a vision and have passion for that vision and you achieve that vision but if you can't do not be dejected do not be depressed and at the same time if you are successful also do not be happy about over joyous about that that's what bhagavad gita no it's very easily said then then that's why shane shane uparamed slowly and steadily yes times up yeah. <laughs> so we can take more questions from this here for next two days so you can brief something about tomorrow's lecture tomorrow uh, will be angels and demons no that's what the topic of lecture is and it's not of that dan what is it dan brown no no not that angel anymore and then third day it will be uh, facing real life challenges you are facing me that kind of challenge <laughs> we hope to have more interactive sessions on the third day so hope to can come up you can come up with your own questions and uh, we'll and i am here uh, now i will have food and then go yes. so tomorrow also anytime anybody wants to eat. फैकल्टी एडवाइजर प्रोफेसर जयंत चैटर्जी फेलिसिटेट स्वामीजी शॉल एंड